Hi guys and welcome back to An Actor's Notebook. So um, I'm super excited to talk to you guys today. So actually it was my birthday a couple days ago um, before I uploaded like the last, well, it was a while ago. <laughs> anyway, um, right before I uploaded Tina and um, I posted about it on my Instagram and Katori Hall, the writer for the musical that's gonna be on Broadway and the writer for so many of like, so many more amazing plays that I love, um, liked my post and I like had a mini freak out, you guys. Like I'm telling you, like I was like, oh my God, she knows that I exist. Like I was, I, I was so excited. And so I was inspired to do this video about Katori Hall. Um, for those of you who do not know her, you should know her. I don't know how you wouldn't know her, especially if you're in theater. Um, and you are an actor or playwright or anything like that, you should know Katori Hall. Um, but, oh, before we start, <laughs> Let's take a moment to like, subscribe, and all that jazz, and don't forget to hit the bell notification. So, let's get started, because I'm super excited, as you guys can tell, because I totally forgot to do the whole like, subscribe, and all that jazz thing. Okay, so, Katori Hall, I have like my notes right here, so if I look down, just know that I'm giving you facts. Okay, so Katori Hall, um, for those of you who don't know, she wrote some plays um, like The Mountaintop which I absolutely adore. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, Hurt Village, which I just read and love. Um, Children of Killers, Tina, of course, and many more. Um, she got her BA from Columbia for African American Studies and Creative Writing. And then she got her MFA from Harvard for acting. Yes, I know, crazy. I find that a lot of playwrights were actors yeah so actually the reason why she started playwriting i saw this in one of her interviews that i loved um she talked about how she had this assignment that for her acting class and they had to find something for their type her and the other actor and the other actress was also a black woman and they just could not find any scenes with two black women um and so they actually asked their professor and the professor had like little to no idea um, and I guess they found something or whatever, but in that moment, she was like, this is ridiculous that there's no options. I'll create options. Um, and so then she went and did this whole program at Juilliard for, um, playwriting and she became a playwright and she is the first black woman to win the, um, Oliver Award for Best New Play. She is now currently writing for television for this, um, on stars for this new, like, TV series, which I'm so excited to write. If you follow her on Instagram, you'll see, like, more posts about that. But yeah, she's just a beast, um, and I love all of her plays. I very much connect with her plays. Um, The Mountaintop was, I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but The Mountaintop was a play, um, that I believe was first done at, uh, the Yale Repertory Theater, and it had Angela Bassett and Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> what a cast, right? Um, and, <laughs> Angela Bassett's like a living, I love her. But um, yeah, so it was Martin Luther King, Samuel L. Jackson, and the like housemaid of, well, she's really an angel, um, undercover, <laughs> as a housemaid at this uh, motel which he's going to die at the next day and she's basically telling him this and there's some great monologues out there for uh african-american female actresses i highly recommend it's hard to find a monologue with so many switches you know like you go from the monologue that i love is the one where i kind of like cut it um but it starts with like you perfect like, why should I be? Honey, I've lied, I've cheated, I've stole, I've cursed, but what I've hated most is I've hated, hated myself. Um, I can give you guys a link to that 
monologue down below if you guys are interested in watching it. I think I did that from one of my other videos and a lot of you guys went and actually watched um, the monologue that I did. So I'll put that in the description. I actually think I have, it's connected. It's like two different monologues. You don't have to watch the other one. I feel like the other one was bad, <laughs> but it's all right. We all have our ups and downs, but um, yeah, I cut it and it's just so many switches. She goes in to talk about the time, how she died uh, essentially, cause she's now an angel. And this is her mission is to get him to like, kind of cope with the fact that he's going to die. Um, but yeah, so it is absolutely crazy and, um, it's just great. Like the writing is just amazing. You can see, like, here's the thing. A great actress can do great work with no writing. Like you have to fill in the blanks yourself. But when you're given like the right text, and it's like meaty with all of these different shifts of emotions and you can show your range and you can condense that into like a good monologue. <sighs> or even like if you don't need to condense it, if you're thinking about good plays to like direct. <sighs> I mean, that's half the battle. It's getting one that's written greatly. Another um, play that I'm going to talk to you guys about out today that I actually just read um, is Hurt Village. Hurt Village, uh, it reminds me of where I'm from, <laughs> you know? Like it's very like, if you grew up in the hood and you knew the hood, you were around the hood, this is it. This is your hood right here. <laughs> like, it's just amazing, but there's also so much different layers like there's some great female characters in here if you look young like me like um i think cookie is a very good character she's 13 years old and she's seen all this crap in her life like all of this crap um because of where they're from where they live and it's just normal kind of things that you see when you're growing up in poverty and um she's smart she wants to be a rapper <laughs> and um, she doesn't want to get pregnant because her mom had her super young, you know, like that kind of cycle, which I understand because my mom had me young, um, her mom had her young and, you know, it's just kind of like breaking that cycle. Um, she's very smart. She wants to be a rapper, yes, but she really wants to be a flight attendant because she wants to see the world beyond Hurt Village. Hurt Village is this community, this low poverty community that's actually, uh, the mayor is turning it and changing it and and um, building up a community where it's supposed to be like a mix between the poor and like middle class or whatever so everyone who's living there is having to move and it has like all these problems with like that kind of situation of when you're poor and you're out on the street because they're trying to make the uh the neighborhood better but in the sense like everyone's getting kicked out of places that they probably live their entire lives um and then you have uh, the issue of being a young girl blossoming and um the men who are attracted and like vultures and um then you have some great uh, male characters as well, like the one who is actually Cookie's father who left, he's in the war. He, Cookie, uh, he never, he left Cookie when she was three, so she doesn't know him. And Crank is like Cookie's mom. It's <laughs> some interesting names, yes. But it's like all like nicknames. Um, anyway, Crank is Cookie's mom and um, he left her when, you know, kind of she, she had a baby he went off to like fight in the wars he came back he has ptsd now um we live in a neighborhood where they're shooting and killing each other and you know going back to reverting to like having to do deal, deal again and like this, it's just like this whole crazy situation and even when i'm just telling you kind of like the plot and like what it is um it's just it's just amazing. Like it's about community and the way it's written is so real. Like these are things, like it's like she sat in the community and just listened to hear people talk and just like wrote it all down. So that's amazing. And if you really are like 
I don't know, sometimes it's interesting to find like everything that you can connect with, with a play, you know, so that when you're actually being the person and when you're playing this person or when you're doing it for a monologue, like you're authentic and real because you get it. There's a place inside yourself where you just know, like you just know this person. Maybe you met them, maybe you see them, maybe you are them, but it's just so real and so nice to read about. It's like reading about like, <laughs> my neighborhood or my history or, or my friends and I enjoy that I enjoy seeing myself and, and, and feeling like someone else's story is being told you know that's not normally told so yeah Hurt Village is amazing and um that was Katori Hall I hope that you read on her I am thinking about doing this thing she made me like doing all this like information on her and making this in, uh, video about her uh, kind of made me actually want to do a video about um, oh she also has directing credits which is you know she's a playwright director actor extraordinaire you know <laughs> um, but it kind of made me want to do like a whole like series of vlogs about female playwrights because I feel like not that many of them are actually like widely known. Um, and I know some female playwrights who um, are just amazing. Like I've read their plays. Not all of their stuff has been published. It has been, um, they could have won awards for it. They could have um, put it up in many different theaters, but some of it isn't like available to the public, like the actual like play itself. And most of the time when that happens, I'll like email them, tell them I like this one, or ask them about future ones. And I've had, I've grown connections with some of them where they have sent me uh, the play. Um, and I was wondering if I could talk to them, maybe get permission and do like this whole like, um, maybe give it to a few of you guys. Um, and then like throughout the series, whether some of them are published or not maybe i can do like this whole kind of like raffling thing where um if you i'm thinking about it like if you do like a screenshot and show me that you're subscribed and follow my instagram and then message me on instagram and let me know then i can pick like maybe five ten of you depending on the playwright and what kind of permission i get from them um and then i can send you like a script of a play of your choice for which one of them i think that would be cool and a way for you guys to get to know them a little bit more and then maybe you'll buy their other works um or if some of them aren't published maybe you'll contact them and get that connection as well so i was thinking about doing that put that in the comments and see if like that's something that you guys are interested in i know i say this for like later on in the video so you had to kind of stay and watch <laughs> um but say let me know if that's something you're interested in i'll tell you some of the playwrights who i'll probably be doing um lynn nottich Love Lynn Nottage. Absolutely amazing beast of a writer. <laughs> um, Lauren Feldman. I don't know if you know her. Uh, she is a Florida writer. Amazing. Absolutely. Um, I have a lot of her works that may have not been published. Susie Lauren Parks. Venus is my favorite. That's probably the one I'm going to be talking about. Um, uh, Jacqueline what was her last name? I, I didn't write down her last name. Um, but Men on Boats actually did a production of it um, and met her. Um, amazing. Have that play too and others. Uh, Adrian Kennedy, of course, you gotta get with the classics like Adrian Kennedy, uh, Carol Churchill, Numbers, my, probably the one I'm gonna be talking about for her. Uh, Claire Barone, uh, Dance Nation, I think a mentioned her before but she has so many other works you know you you got older you get older something like that i think that is the one that is attached with the mountaintop monologue that is going to be linked below you don't have to watch it it was bad um <laughs> but uh or you can watch it and be like uh oh well she's not that great <laughs> you know whatever whatever you feel um but she wrote that one too uh she just has some great works that i have um Young Jing Lee just made her Broadway debut with, I think, White Men. Anyway, um, yeah, so, and this is a good array of female uh, playwrights. Like, I know Katori Hill is black. I know I speak a lot about, like, black playwrights and stuff like that. But this is just female. I got white. I got Asian. I got, uh, 
Do I have Hispanic in there? Maybe I'll find one. But these are just some of the ones I'm gonna be talking about. And I think I may do, like if I do a video with them to make it kind of shorter, I'll put like two playwrights in one. And then um, if you win for that week for that play, I can let you choose the playwright that you're interested in. And then um, the play that I talked about that maybe you'll be interested in me sending you so yeah let's try that put that in comments if that's something that you're interested in i just really want to cater to you guys so just please comment or if you just have a lot of people um a lot of you guys have been um liking my instagram already or following my instagram already and messaging me like personal questions that you really want to know i'm all right with that absolutely um so if you already follow me and this is something that you're interested in and you don't want to put it on the comments on youtube absolutely put it on the um message me on instagram uh dm me and just let me know so uh yeah thank you guys so much let me know if you're interested in doing that series um I hope you guys like this vlog. I know it's kind of long, but we're talking about playwrights, people. Like, <laughs> it's just there's so much to say. Um, but yeah, let me know uh, down in the comments or DM me. And yeah, have a good day, guys.